Ian, how is your fund different from the other funds that are out there? So Andrew, our flexible fund, uh, first of all, important to mention is it's not regulation 28. So by definition, this fund has the ability to leverage between asset classes or move between asset classes depending on which asset class reflects the best relative returns over time. So in other words, this fund has the ability to be 100% invested in equity uh, or have a very low equity weighting depending on what prospective asset class returns look like. In terms of the levers that we have to pull um, or the ability to generate returns in this fund, we can access all asset classes. So everything from uh, listed property, listed equity, bonds, both offshore equity, uh, offshore bonds, uh, as well as various derivative strategies we employ to try and maximize uh, returns at the lowest possible risk for our clients. The ultimate goal in this fund is to generate a real return. So we really focus on not uh, losing any capital or minimizing the potential for a capital loss and a lot of the strategies that we adopt are really focused around that. Not just from an overall asset allocation perspective but also from an individual security perspective. How we build a portfolio, we very much focus on trying to allocate capital to those assets which we feel can generate real returns over time. And that at the end of the day gives us the ability to, to over the longer term offer a portfolio of assets which has the ability to generate a real return with the probability of not losing um, capital. So we think our flexible fund is quite different from our peer set in the industry and the reason we say that it is a true flexible fund and you can see that if you look at our breakdown of our various asset classes where we've tried to get exposure to a lot of different asset classes and securities whose returns are uh, hopefully uncorrelated because effectively what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a portfolio of assets whereby the potential for real returns is there but also where there's not a huge correlation between a lot of those assets depending on certain market movements and you can see that when you look at the breakdown of our portfolio and you look at the underlying allocations of capital to those different asset classes over time. So for example, our flexible fund is not just a cash equity fund. We, we utilize all the levers and all the asset classes available to us to try and maximize returns whilst at the same time reducing the risk or exposing the capital to the least possible risks. And you can see that via our exposure to you know, offshore equities, offshore bonds, um, local property, offshore property, and then obviously domestic equity. So we really are accessing every single asset class to try and maximize those real returns over time, but very importantly, also minimizing the potential for capital loss. And the way we do that, as I said earlier, is that we try and focus on asset opportunities where those securities are priced at discounts to their intrinsic value. In other words, you're paying a lot less than what the asset is actually worth. We then hold that over time to try and extract that, that value opportunity relative to what share prices price today. Now clearly it's very difficult to forecast returns over the short period, but over the longer term, if you as an allocator of capital and as Truffle, if we have bought securities which are trading at significant discounts to the intrinsic value, or in other words, where there's margin of safety, what that does for a client is it increases the probability of a real return, first of all, but also that margin of safety by definition means that your potential for capital loss is also minimized. And that's really what this fund is about. It's about trying to generate a real return for clients over time, but trying to reduce the underlying risk that we're exposing the capital to in that process. And we do that by really identifying and focusing on securities which are mispriced relative to what they're worth. So trying to buy something that's worth a rand for 50 cents and then hold it for a long period of time and then as that gap closes, that's the real return that gets unlocked for clients um, over the longer term. Ian, thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge on the funds. Thanks, Andrew, for your time. Thank you very much. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details, please visit our website.